Greetings, Turians, Chaos here. Yesterday, I uploaded a build challenge video where I had to create a house using only one type of block. I relied heavily on the use of paint to accomplish this, and so I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about some of the different ways that I use paint in Terraria today. But first, how important is it? Well, let's take a look at the log cabin I built in the one block challenge. You can see that it appears to have a brown wood with a stone floor, a stone foundation, and some stone in the roof. If I was to remove all of the paint that I use, you can see how drastically different the build looks. The foundation no longer looks like stone, the wood takes on an off-putting color, and it becomes immediately apparent that only one type of block was used in this build. While with paint, it might not be that apparent at first. Paint can also give depth to a build. Looking at the build that I'm currently standing in, you'll notice the foundation is brighter than the row of stone inside of the room. They're both the same type of wall, it's just the difference in paint that gives the illusion of depth. So now that I've discussed how much paint can impact a build, let's take a look at different ways that I personally use paint in Terraria. So, first off, you'll tell that I have sandstone. Yes, I know it's a meme that follows me around. And yes, I know that you all know that I like to paint sandstone gray. But the fact of the matter is that it makes a really, really nice looking stone substitute. Particularly for caverns that you want to have stalactites and stalagmites. So, that's pretty much why I use the stone, or sandstone painted gray instead of just stone. Another thing that we could paint in this area right here is with some negative paint and some smoke block. And we just paint that smoke block with the negative paint and it makes a nice animated splash effect that doesn't produce any light. Now you'll notice that I'm going to be painting a lot of things that you've seen me use in other builds already. I just wanted to have them all compiled into one list. So the next thing that I'm going to take a look at is this clay right here. You see how it blends in with the dirt. Well say we wanted an area of dirt that doesn't grow anything on it because grass and uh, plants cannot grow on top of clay. All we need to do is grab some brown paint and just paint the clay and it'll start to blend in with the dirt around it. Now it does have this line texture right now but as soon as you log out and back in or you could just hammer the blocks a few times it'll clear up those lines and you won't see them anymore and now you can't tell the difference between the clay and the dirt. For the tree there's several things that we could do. I'm going to grab so the negative paint, I'm just going to slap it on the leaves and we end up with a really nice vibrant uh, cherry blossom tree look. And this also works if you were to paint uh, normal trees except for the fact that it also paints the branches themselves and it could be a little bit of an off-putting look. So I don't usually do the negative on uh, natural trees, but I do use it on custom trees. Additionally, if you wanted to paint it brown, it'll make it look like the leaves are all dried up and dying, which could be useful in certain situations. You could also paint it with some yellow or red or orange to give some autumn colors to the build. Another thing that we could look at in terms of paint and trees is if we grab some pumpkin and we grab some red paint and we just place the pumpkin within the tree and we use the red paint on them, we end up with a block that looks quite a lot like an apple and it's pretty convincing for your custom trees. Another way that we can impact uh, nature surroundings with paint is with uh, some strange plants or dye plants in general. Uh, I'm just going to use these two color of strange plants for now, but if we hit them with some lime paint, you'll see that we end up with a nice looking bush texture. But if we go into the desert, we can hit that with some brown paint 
and it looks like a dead bush which fits the desert quite well and some white paint works really well in the snow biome. You could even do some gray though I'm not as fond of that within the snow biome. It does look quite nice. If you're doing a challenge where you don't want to have ice block but you need to mimic ice or if you want to have some ice that is not slippery slidey just grab some palladium ore with some negative paint and it makes a fairly decent although a little bit brighter uh, ice substitute so against the normal ice block it stands out a lot but if it's on its own it does work pretty decently as an ice substitute so with brown paint as you all know by watching my builds there is a lot that we can do uh, especially with woods so if I paint all of the wood here you'll see that it starts to take on the same color as the base wood on the bottom layer as well as the living wood up here on that row and with this we can easily have a bunch of different textures of wood with relatively the same color which allows us to get a lot more variety within our wooden builds without having to sacrifice uh, the color palette. The only difference here is that we have a little bit of a darker bit for the spooky wood and a little bit lighter for the ebon wood, but that could just be changed depending on if you want a more rugged build or not. And speaking of more rugged builds, if you just grab some orange paint and go over everything again, it makes it look a little bit more faded. And while the wood doesn't blend as perfectly, you can mix and match things to get quite a more faded or rugged looking wooden build with just a splash of orange paint. Now make sure it's not deep orange, otherwise it'll just look like it's orange. But if you do the normal orange, it does look a lot more faded and still looks brown. The same technique works with stone and gray paint. And we could even blend some wood in here. Uh, shade wood and rich mahogany work quite well with this. But you'll see that all of this stone texture that we have here, we can just paint it with gray. And while some of it is a little bit lighter than others, particularly the sandstone segments, we do end up with relatively similar looking stone colors all of the way through. And if you don't have access to palladium column, what we could do is just place some rich mahogany in there and it looks uh, a little bit different but quite similar. Using some brown paint, we could easily make metallic segments look a little bit rusted. So if I slap some brown on top of this lead fence, it does give it a rusted appearance. And the same goes for the chains. I like to do it towards the end pieces of the chains. It looks quite nice. This purple rain wallpaper is something that is starting to gain a little bit more popularity. And it's a technique that I personally learned from Rulik. But if you take this, and it only really works with this wallpaper. It doesn't work with the uh, rainbow one, but if you paint it, it has a nice mesh pattern to it. I like to use it in grays or whites, but you could use any color you want, and it'll look like a fence or a mesh pattern or a netting, uh, depending on how you decide to paint it. But it's a very, very handy material to use with paint. Using some deep paint on sale you can easily get an assortment of very vibrant colors, which could be very handy if you want to have uh, clotheslines with hanging clothes like this, or if you wanted to do something like hanging flags. However, the reason I say you want to do it with uh, deep paint is because you could see if I just do regular red paint on there it's not quite as vibrant so while some things look better when you paint them deep other things look better when you paint them with just regular paint taking a pile of coins with some black paint just splash it on top and you end up with a nice little texture that looks like a pile of coal 
we're back with some pumpkin and this texture looks a lot like fabric when you hang it from a line of uh, platforms like this it could be quite useful as drapes so I'm just gonna paint that with a nice deep purple and actually pumpkin holds paint quite well so you don't necessarily have to use a deep paint it'll just look a little bit more faded but not much so this is one of those versatile paint or blocks that take paint of both colors quite well. Off to the left here, you'll see that we have a little background doorway with a blood zombie statue in it. If you just slap some shadow paint on these, you get a silhouette of the blood zombie in the background and you can also spawn the enemy uh, with some wiring. So for adventure maps and stuff like that, it really gives the appearance of an enemy in a doorway that comes out to attack you. If we grab some brown paint and we just go over glass, you can see that it gets tinted to the point where it kind of looks dusty. And so I use brown paint on glass to make it look a little dusty, but painting glass in general is a great way to just make it stand out and pop and just pick colors that kind of go with and complement the paints that you're using within your build. When painted, Dynasty Wood looks fantastic as a pipe. It looks pretty good with uh, various different colors. I like to use gray most frequently, but if there's a lot of gray in the background already, I might use white just to make it stand out a little bit more. If I'm doing something like a futuristic or modern day build, and I'm gonna have pipes where I'm emulating hot and cold water, I might do a deep red paint or a deep blue paint to indicate which pipe is hot and which pipe is cold. But the Dynasty Wood looks amazing when painted to be used as a pipe. And the last thing that I'm gonna talk about in this video is painting furniture with a uh, non-deep paint. So you'll see if I grab some, let's just say, deep sky blue here and I paint the cauldron, you'll see that it turns the entire cauldron a different color, which looks okay, especially if you want that green flame with a blue bubbling liquid. But if I grab a non-deep one, you'll see that it changes the color of the flame and the liquid while leaving the colander itself relatively the same color. And that works with any of the non-deep ones. You can see that it doesn't really change the colander, but it does change the liquid and the flame. And a lot of furniture within Terraria works this way, like beds, tables, stuff like that, where if you paint it with a deep color, it changes the entire thing, but if you paint it with a non-deep color, it only changes a segment of it. So I recommend that you experiment around with it and see what you enjoy best. And that's all that I wanted to talk about for today regarding paints. I hope you found this build tip video useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.